Moving into the conversation slightly more towards Rezo, the new streaming platform, I'm just going to bring up some stats um, which I think are interesting. Yeah, I'm interested to see these. So this is this is just like this is a bit of a projection, obviously. So this is how many downloads there are for TikTok versus Spotify. Now imagine if a fraction of these downloaded and became subscribers to Rezo by Dance's new streaming platform, it would instantly be bigger than Spotify. They've got a big, they're going to have to be worried. Yeah, I I remember, and and this stat is probably well, I know for a fact this stat has to be outdated because I really took hold in this like about two months ago, but when TikTok surpassed 1.2 billion downloads at that point yep. they were at 800 million active engaged daily users i think it's 1.5 billion now isn't it like in terms of like total downloads probably right? see yeah exactly because that that growth rate i know it's more but let's just mm -hmm. stick with the old stat 800 million actively engaged daily users versus the fact that spotify as a whole actively engaged not engaged free pre like all that as a whole they have 248 million users yeah like that's that's ridiculous right so you're already dealing with a a far greater number at that point and how are they going to compete because that means more people are discovering music and interacting with music on spotify whether it's you want to position it that way or not as a music app or not it's just a reality of the interaction. And obviously, they've, they've, they've been quite clever. They've started in India and Indonesia, just starting out in emerging territories, and they're already bigger than Spotify there, as you can, you know. Of course. So it's a good place to start. Obviously, I imagine it will come, roll out in the US within the next six to nine months as well. I don't think it'll be too long before we start seeing it in, you know, in the US and Europe. And I, I just yeah. think that, yeah, even if, like, you know, a quarter of 25% of TikTok users moved over to Rezo versus like Spotify, Apple Music, you know, it's already a massive market share. And I like the social what? aspects as well. The elements of this stream platform versus the rest is much more focus on, you know, user generated content and social sharing. Well, let's uh, talk more on that. Speak more on the, the social aspect of that. Yep. So I'm just going to bring these off the screen just so I can see, just give you a proper detailed breakdown of what we're looking at. So the main focus right now is going to be on um, focusing on like user generated contents. So you'll be able to, you know, create gifts based on the songs and you'll also be able to comment on the track. So when you're listening to a track, you'll be able to see loads of different users comments about what the song means to them and also share their, their gifts and videos that have gone to create it as well. So you'll be able to see a whole a big collection of, you know, stuff you see on TikTok will appear while you're listening to tracks. So it'll actually encourage you to stay on the app and not actually, you know, lock your phone. Holy shit. That's if, that's like, if SoundCloud did it right. Yeah, yeah. Right, and on, on a my, minor scale of that, Spot, SoundCloud allows you to see those comments as it streamed through. Mm -hmm. And that is something that's still unique to SoundCloud. That's, and I actually, you know, it's, it's cool to, to see and watch um, yeah. at times. So, that, and that is that, which is, yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. I, they, and it's interesting how they really take those learnings from the TikTok and they're applying it. And because they're so ahead of the curve from an innovation point, I think Spotify, they really have trouble. Um, and they've taken over those emerging markets. For one, it doesn't hurt because Spotify is a platform that have been trying to capitalize and make money at the point. Well, TikTok will have to. They've been kind of ducking some of the regulation. Um, but but as opposed to having the answer and having that expectation of money that people have, like people, artists expect to make money off of Spotify. We need to make money. Y'all are playing our stuff. Y'all are taking our stuff. Mm -hmm. TikTok, yes, the record labels look at it like this, but artists aren't thinking like that about TikTok, no. right? The general public, you're not expecting, it's just social media, right? It, and from that standpoint, the front facing, you're looking at it like a Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's like, man, this is just where we interact. This is where we engage. They're not injecting that expect. So because of that, it being free and positioned that way allows it to expand in emerging markets for one um, a, a lot faster. But understanding that we can get our first mover advantage and take market share here before Spotify has something meaningful. And then we're going to move into 
the places that you that you um you know are already powerful like the u.s because that's also another thing when it comes to it's this weird game amazon apple um they do it with multiple companies them two are the most prevalent and amazon apple and google they'll oftentimes get into markets that they know that they aren't going to be the hugest in and kill but it's more about hedging your bets and playing defense. It's like, we're going to come take yeah. some of your market share over here. Our main business is this. We don't truly care about our, our streaming platform like that, like that when it comes to Apple, Amazon, Google, but we have to have presence for one, we can take the learnings and invest it somewhere else. And yeah. two, we're just, hey, we're showing you, Hey, you know, don't come on my block. I'm gonna come on your block too. And, and, and it kind of slows things down. And, and, and they, they, they do that with multiple industries because there's, they just have the ability to do it. But Spotify is number one in America now. What I try to explain to people when it comes to TikTok, it's still so new in America and people don't realize it. It's still so new in the UK. Like it, we, there's still a lot of stigmas attached to it that don't exist. Mm -hmm. But not realizing one, there's already millions of people in their 30s and 40s on TikTok already. All right. And I'm like, this isn't me like selling TikTok. This is just what's happening. And yeah, I've been truly nice. baffled by the shit that I've seen and the experiences that I've had being on it, running campaigns, being on it, just observing, reading the pa papers, sit <laughs> papers. I don't, I haven't read a newspaper. I don't know why I said papers, but reading articles and things like that, like, and, and seeing even the government, the geopolitics, uh, you know, r related to it. It's, it's very interesting. And it makes the, it's one of the most, it's one of the best at globalization I've seen even through media experiences, um, yeah. and largely because of how they their rhythm. So like, TikTok is, it has a lot of things that are worth watching. Uh, if, even if you aren't engaging, even if you don't believe in it from a music standpoint, what they're doing and the, the things around it, the business implications and industry implications alone are extremely interesting and entertainment for somebody like me who can kind of nerd out on business and and marketing and then obviously for for, for artists for, for rezo when this launches you know you know worldwide it's a whole new stream platform to market yourself on and obviously with, with tiktok you know focusing on like e-commerce and stuff i imagine that will flow into you know to rezo before spotify sorts their end out with you know with tipping artists and stuff so i imagine they'll be the first to do that as well and what, what, when you, you, said, you when did you say that Spotify is is thinking about tipping artists? They are they are looking into it. Yeah, they've they've publicly okay. said they are looking into it. But I imagine that TikTok right. would probably and ByteDance would be first. But with Rezo, when from what I've seen from the images and visuals, that you go on your streamer track, you'll see like the you know Spotify Cambo, the visual looping. You'll see something similar to that to go over track. Then you're also, you're going to see like lyrics floating around, comments from users floating around, gifs floating around on on the screen. So. Just totally different listening experience to any other streaming platform. It is. And it changes why you engage and why you stream. So what I would say coming from something like that, right? Understanding how there's always been these parody songs that can blow up. Mm -hmm. And but a lot of times those parody songs don't necessarily make money. You have the ones that become that make money, and then you have a lot of parody songs that just become like a big YouTube video or something like that. But now that it's associated and, and can be on a streaming platform, you'll have music that truly makes money, at least from a streaming standpoint, not because it's good, right? And not that whole subjective thing that people talk about and whether it's good or not. No, I mean, where everybody acknowledges this isn't good and it is a joke, but because you're on this platform and you're seeing, not only you're hearing this music that might not be that great, but you're engaging with people and seeing comments that might be funny is going to keep you on exactly. that track and listening yeah. at the rather same than, time. Rather than going to Twitter or Instagram and see what people are saying about it, you're exactly. on the platform and you're still listening to music at the same time. So you're getting, you know, royalties anyway. Exactly. So, yeah. It's like if you were listening to Blueface and they had that whole thing about him being offbeat and you were getting the commentary about him being offbeat there and the jokes, him, him being mm -hmm. offbeat kind of like a YouTube video, except it's actually playing and looping and the money's being paid out. And like, there's, there's entire, this entire truly engaging social space at the same time. I think if they do that, like I'm imagining it, I think that's going to be really interesting. Yeah, yeah but it'd be, it'd really be the go-to place for memes and gifts and stuff, like if, if they get it right, 
Like that is exactly. the potential. So exactly. Nobody has done gifts well yet to me on social media. I think Twitter is the best when it comes to how they leverage gifts. Yeah. Because you know they're basically a video on Instagram I mean, things like gifts are so powerful and, and they're truly underutilized. It's yeah. truly underutilized. It's funny as well. Cause obviously we, we've mentioned this before, but Spotify was very social when it first came along and it's gradually become more and more like reserved on that front, but they are looking mm-hmm. at a, um, it's going to find the article, but they're looking at this uh, feature called taste buds. Where we're trying to bring back, you know, the friends and social sharing back into the platform a little bit, but yeah. it feels like a bit, a bit too late really, doesn't it? But, um, too little, too late. So this is the, let's just put up. This was the article quietly testing its taste buds and they pulled down the website they had for it as well. Mm. Mm. But it's interesting that obviously this is this obviously has come about from a direct result of TikTok. There's no, there's no, it's no coincidence that they're looking into this now because they had, they had these features before. But yep, this well, doesn't that really was that fork in the road, man. Yeah, it's when those type of apps. It's, are you going to build it for the people or are you going to build it for business and investors and those corporates that be right? And so we discussed last they, time. Yeah, yeah, they made the decision too early or haven't figured out how to do both i i guess you could yep. say and they were you know they they were pioneers in what some of the things that they did so uh, you know i think they i guess they had to take some of the arrows in, in dealing and probably allowing the licensing and record labels to take a little bit too much of a stronghold over them and that's yeah. affected the actual user interaction and innovation end of things Ow.